Oh, it's freezing in here. It's almost liquid freezing. Hey guys and welcome back to the first kind of proper video um, of 2017 from Back of Beyond Tech. So uh, I alluded to the fact that some lovely person had bought me this, an Arctic Liquid Freezer 360 um, for, for my Christmas slash birthday in the live, live stream. So it arrived today um, and it is pretty beast. I have to admit I'm quite impressed with how small the packaging is but Let's crack it open and have a quick look at what you get in the box and we'll go through some of the features about this. I'm not the best at doing unboxings guys, uh, so bear with me. Uh, here we go, so, wow, screws and bolts, need those, let's put them there, get that mouse out of the way. Uh, mine even, bloody hell. Okay, so AMD, we don't need that. Um, this is all the Intel stuff. Oh, and some MX Thermal Compound, that's cool. I probably won't use it. I'll probably use the Noctua stuff I always use. Fans, so we have two fans. 120 millimeter fans, they are. Um, now let's see, instructions, yeah. It's all normal so far. Um, let's see what else do we get in the box. All right, here we go. Wow. Okay. So that all came out in one go. Let's kind of get rid of that off camera. So really big pump head. Oh, how do you get into this? All right, here we go. So three fans, four fans, five. Six fans, that's right people, it's push-pull out of the box, which is one of the reasons I'm glad this guy bought me this radiator. Uh, let's get rid of that. So let's have a look guys. So here's the rad, it's pretty thin, um, aluminum, aluminum, aluminium, I'm British. Uh, aluminum radiator, it's three centimeters thick, which is pretty standard for an all-in-one and here is the pump head which is actually pretty big and meaty now it's got an Acer Tech pump in it um, which means the quality is going to be fine looks like it's got a really big um, copper block which is great because it's going to be killing my killing my uh, <clears throat> Broadwell chip so I would kind of it's going to be a challenge to fit because the chibs are actually quite short. Very nice though. Lovely plastic. And then I assume this goes into the CPU header. Little 3P, 3P fan. So there we go guys. So that's it. It's pretty standard AIO, apart from the fact that it comes out of the box um, and you can configure it in push-pull, which is pretty cool. It's got these massive long cables that are braided oh and you oh that's cool so I can daisy chain these by the looks of things which is good so I'm gonna go on like that uh, yeah I'm quite impressed I have to admit I'm quite impressed it looks looks the business it's gonna be really fucking thick with six bands on it though like twice of that thick very thick um so Water cooling, something I haven't done in a very long time. Um, I'm intrigued to see how this works out. Uh, uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this thing together, get it installed, um, I'll get some B-roll for you guys. But first of all, I need to find out what my sort of stable is, my normal. So I am gonna run IDA64 for 60 minutes. I'm gonna do the CPU stress test. Um, so I've got IDA64 here, um, I have CPU-Z open to make sure it's hitting the 4.2 overclock constantly. Um, and then what I'll do is I will record the hottest core and the CPU package. Then I'll get all this stuff 
installed, which is actually going to be more of a pain than I thought because I have to remove quite a lot of fans. Um, and I'll do the same test again, and then that'll probably be this video over with, guys. And then I'm hoping the additional cooling this is going to give me is going to let me push my overclock um, a bit further, but um, keep the temperatures down. So, guys, we're going to do some off camera stuff, and by the magic of video editing, there will be a wee montage, and then there will be some results and some discussion. Bye for now. Hey, guys, well, um, I'm going to stop the stress test. It's been 36 minutes and the average temperature is, well, the hottest core is 49.5 49 degrees and the CPU package maximum is 46. Oh, sorry, and the maximum temperature, so I gave you an average there, is 58. So I'm going to stop the test after 36 minutes, I think. That's as hot as it's going to get. It is Scotland, so it is very cold at the moment. It's like pff, minus one outside at the moment. So I'm going to stop the test. I'm going to get this bad boy installed, which is probably going to be more difficult than I thought. And then we'll do the same with this guy, okay? Hey, guys. So there we have it. It's installed in the machine. A um, couple of things I want to mention about um, the product that I didn't mention before is... All six fans are actually PWM controllable, so they're four pin fans, so they can all be controlled through the BIOS or whatever other fan tuning software you have, which is fantastic. Um, and then a couple of pointers about installation. Now this, I think, in a <coughs> fresh build would take like half an hour to install. Because I was retrofitting it, I actually had to remove both my graphics cards so I could get the fans off of my Noctua cooler to then remove that cooler. And then from there, it was a pretty simple installation process, apart from the retention bracket. Now, the retention bracket actually clicks into the pump housing itself. So you push it in and then, and then, and then you, you twist it counterclockwise to lock. So the only thing you need to bear in mind when you're doing that is to get the orientation right so that when you then put it into the motherboard, the pump head's in the right orientation. So now let's... Um, take a look at those benchmarks and see if we've actually improved. So guys, I think you can see from that <coughs> um, that I had a massive improvement. Now, bear in mind my temperatures um, are all measured with CPU over overclocked 4.2 gigahertz running at 1.34 volts. And we all know what a heat beast the 6800K is. Now, um, because I live in Scotland at the moment, it's like minus five outside. So inside the room, it's probably about 17, 18 degrees. And that's the temperature I like it. So my ambients are quite low anyway. And, you know, the Nocta was doing a great job um, cooling it. You can see from the idle numbers on the on the CPU package and the hottest core itself that the, the Arctic cooler didn't actually drop them that much. I mean, I think the, the package dropped by four degrees and the hottest core, uh, hottest core, the hottest, yeah, hottest core was um, only two degrees cooler. But when you look at the load temperatures, now this is, Ida 64 running um, for 35 minutes. I find after 35 minutes that the, it, the CPU wasn't getting hotter. So we, we just took it at 35 minutes. So after 35 minutes, the Arctic cooler was actually eight degrees lower on the package and 12 degrees lower on the hottest core. Now that's massive for me because I'm looking to push this chip maybe to 4.4 and from what I've read, to get to 4.4, um, you, you really need to be going to sort of 1.4, 1.45 volt, which is gonna produce a lot more heat. And I'd actually like to see if it'll go to 45. There are there are people that have overclocked 6800 to 4.5, but that requires 1.5 volts. So I'm not sure how comfortable I am doing that. But all in all, I've got to say that the, um, the Arctic Liquid Freezer 360 is a great product. Um, I think you can pick this up for around about £100 on Amazon at the moment and for a 360mm AIO um, with six fans included and they're all PWM fans so you can put it straight into push-pull 
that is an immense bargain compared to what else is out there. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't fault, fault it. Um, I think it's a really good product. I think if you're looking for an all-in-one cooler that's got a little bit more thermal headroom, this thing's got a TDP rating of 300, and, yeah, 300 watts, which is more than enough for most CPUs out there. Um, yeah, I, th I think it's a good buy. So guys, let me know what you think in the comments. It's the first video of 2017. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, you know what to do. Don't forget to comment, guys. As always, I love hearing your thoughts. Um, if you're liking the comments, uh, the comments, if you're liking the content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget that every Sunday from now on at 7 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, I'm going to be doing a live stream. So take it easy, guys, and I'll catch you again in another great tech video. Bye.